Hey Data Factory fans, this is Daniel Perlovsky here, and today I'm going to talk to you all about how to set up a proper CI/CD pipeline when working with Azure Data Factory. Now, I know we've had a few resources regarding this before, but I've got a lot of questions on it, and I sort of wanted to have one succinct central place to answer all of your questions regarding the CI/CD process. Now, today we're going to focus primarily on Git integration. First, I'm going to talk a little about kind of a high level, what is CI/CD, both at an industry level outside the data factory setting, then bring it back into what that looks like when working on Azure Data Factory. And then from there, I'm going to give you a little demo on what it actually looks like in practice. So first, Let's talk a little bit about what is continuous, continuous integration and delivery. Now, continuous integration is the idea that you have a bunch of different developers working on a single shared branch. All of your developers are doing their changes in parallel, and you need to ensure that every single time someone completes a change and merges it back into that central shared branch, that you're able to test those changes as quickly as possible in an automated fashion. Continuous delivery is the idea that when all of your changes are in the central branch, when you do want to release to production, that you have an automated process, so once you have a test, staging, pre-prod, whatever environments your organization has before you get to production, you're able to have those deployments being done in an automated process that allows you to easily manage and track your changes. Both of these are essential for a scalable enterprise data factory solution. So what's a typical CICD workflow look like? So very commonly, you have a common branch called main. And this is often using Git concepts. And again, these are not specific to Data Factory. This is just, just a generic CI/CD workflow. If you're a developer, you go ahead and you create a feature branch. Now, this feature branch is just containing your singular change. You're merging it back eventually into that main branch. But right now, you're just essentially forking from the main branch, meaning getting a copy of it making your incremental changes, and then when you're ready, testing them and merging those back into the main branch. Now, at this point in time, you're going to want to ensure you've done the proper debugging, and at this pull request process, you're going to be able to have different colleagues review that and ensure that, okay, you've tested your changes and what you're merging is something that you want in that central branch. Now, when it's in that central branch, that's when you're going to actually have that continuous integration. You're going to want smoke tests. You're going to want to create a build. You're going to want to understand, okay, I've merged my changes. Now let's see what my individual change looks like compared with the whole. Once you've done those changes, you're going to want to be able to create a release from that. Now, release is a state in time of what your main branch looks like and what you want to deploy to production. And I'll get into what this looks like in the data factory setting in just one second. Now, you have to define what these different tests mean within your organization and how to ensure completeness as you're going through this process. And, you know, say every week, every few weeks, you're going to have a milestone where you're going to be like, okay, now we're deploying to production. And you're going to create your release, and the release is going to actually go to your different development, pre-prod, prod environments. And you know, you'll have the same continuous integration build, continuous deployments. And as you're kind of, you know, have these different milestones, have these different production deployments, you'll be doing the same process over and over on each developer, you know, creating these branches, merging these changes back in, creating releases, and then you're eventually releasing at whatever cadence you think is proper. And yes, you do this until the end of time, until your job is done and your thing is in production. Now, in Data Factory, this concepts are applied pretty one-to-one. -one. Now, all of the 
creating a feature branches, merging them back into main are done in what we, in Git, which is a technology that makes version controlling very, very easy. Each different environment that you have is going to be a separate factory. So you're going to have a dev factory, you're going to have a prod factory, and you're going to have a bunch of different test factories in between given your organization settings. Now, only the dev factory is actually what you want to have integrated with Git. And there you're going to you know, be able to create your feature branches, merge them back in. And the technology supported right now in Azure Data Factory, and I'm filming this October 2020, are Azure DevOps and GitHub. Now, once you publish, and I'll get into a little bit what that means to the Dev Factory, all other deployments are actually being done via some sort of DevOps tool, whether it be GitHub Action, Azure DevOps Release Pipelines, really your organization choice, and I'm sure you have an organizational policy of how you want to do those release pipelines as well. In these demos, I'm going to be primarily demonstrating what this looks like in a GitHub context. And what we're doing today is focusing specifically on the Git integration, the creation of feature branches and merging them back into collaboration. So let's go ahead and take a look of what that looks like. Starting out, we are in a factory that is not associated with Git. This is going to be our dev factory. And the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to associate this factory with this Git repo, ADF-CICD, which is a public Git repo in GitHub, so feel free to take a look there. Now, this Git repo currently only has one branch, this main branch, which I've installed some permissions within Git to allow you to not be able to edit this directly, only be able to merge in via pull request. I recommend your organization does the same because you don't want users circumventing the feature branch process. And something to keep in mind as well, when you associate a Git repository with a data factory, all the permissions are Git permissions, not Azure RBAC permissions. Those only apply on publish, which we'll get to in the future. Now, here's my factory. I've pre-baked it with a few different resources and published it previously. And as you can see here, we have Git data factory mode and no Git mode. Now, I could set up Git mode here. But I'm going to also set up Git from our management hub. So this toolbox on the bottom here is our management section of Data Factory. And that's where you could do everything you'll need to do regarding Git. You're also able to set up Git mode on creation of a Data Factory through the Azure portal as well. So we have a few different entry points for how you can do this. So first thing I do is I click Set Up My Code Repository. And as you see here, we have two different settings, DevOps, Git, and GitHub. We're going to use GitHub today because that's where our repository exists in. Now, if you're using a GitHub Enterprise Server, as is very common with a large organization, feel free to check that. But I'm just using my personal GitHub account here. So I'm going to type that in, DJP MSFT. And I'll get a list of available Git repos here. And let's select ADF CICD. So the collaboration branch is what your central branch is going to be, and I want this to be main. And as you can see here, I have this ADF resources root folder. So I'm going to do that. Now, if you see here, it says check import uh, existing data factory resources into the repository. So this is taking all the work I've done before having my Git repo and putting it into the repository. I'm going to do that, but do that into a new branch. I don't want to do that into my main branch because, as I said earlier, I cannot write to it without a pull request. So let's call this branch my alias Dapperlov feature. Let's click apply here. And it's that easy. Here you can see now I have a GitHub repository associated with my account. And there are a couple really big benefits here. The first benefit is really great source control that comes with integrating with Git. Now, if you go into your Git repo, and as you can see here, um, we've made changes to one of our feature branches and it's saying we should pull requested into our main branch, but you get all of your different commit history. 
So I could see every single time I've made a change to my Git repo, who made the change at what time, and that makes it really easy to revert changes that we don't want, track and audit who did what. So as you are deploying to production, you could see who is making these changes. Another big benefit is back in the data factory portal, if I'm making changes to my resources, I can incrementally save them. Git kind of stores as a file explorer in the back end, because, you know, working in a web application, to allow you to have a sandbox without publishing those changes directly into your data factory service. Git also has a really great collaboration control process that I'm going to demonstrate when I do create a pull request. And then also just a very side thing is you actually get a lot better UX performance because we're reading from Git instead of the data factory service directly. So let's go back into my authoring branch. And here we could see we have our feature branch with all of the different things we put in here. Now, the first thing we want to do here is take the resources we've imported into the feature branch and merge them back into the main branch. So we could do this by clicking on the branch name and creating a pull request directly from the data factory user experience. Now you could do the same thing if you went directly into your GitHub and create the pull request there. We just sort of redirect you there, give you a quick shortcut. So let's create a pull request. And here we could see we're merging into uh, main from Dapper Love feature. So let's call this merging imported resources. You should give your pull requests good names with descriptions that actually say what they're going to do. For the sake of time, I'm going to be a little quicker here. So let's create this pull request. And at this point in time, you'll likely need um, some policies to merge things back in. Since I'm an admin on my Git repo, I can manually merge the pull request. But in a normal enterprise scenario, I will need a coworker or a colleague to look over my changes. So you could go into files changed, see all of the different um, changes that have been made. We created a data flow. We created a data set. These are all what is expected because this is what we imported into that feature branch. So let's just overwrite this manually merge this pull request confirming that I'm using my admin privileges. Again, this is not a best practice here. This is just for the sake of the demo. So let's merge this pull request and delete the branch. Now, if I delete this branch, this will show up directly in my ADF UX because we're consistently talking to Git. As you can see here, the Dapper Law feature branch was deleted and now I need to go ahead and go either create a new branch or go into main. So now in the main branch, we could see all other branches have been deleted because we only had one other branch and did a pull request. And now let's create another feature. So let's create a new branch. Let's call this my alias new pipeline. And I'm going to create a very simple pipeline that's just going to wait for a few seconds. You know, nothing crazy. So here I am. You could see I'm in my new branch. I have my main branch that I forked from. And let's create a new pipeline. So let's call this CICD demo. And let's just add a singular activity. Keep it as simple as possible. The actual contents of the pipeline obviously doesn't matter. But if you had a more enterprise level pipeline, there'll be a lot more activities that you're adding and a lot more testing that you want to do. So let's say I want to test, I'm going to debug the pipeline, which is just taking what's in front of me before I save, and then, you know, refresh till it succeeded. This will just take, you know, ideally 10 seconds. Great, I validated that this worked. I want to save this, and then let's merge this back into um, my main branch using the same method we saw earlier. So let's create a pull request. Here we could see we have our new branch. We're merging back into main, and these are all the changes that we have here. Just a singular pipeline with one activity. Let's create a pull request, adding the demo. I could leave a comment if I wanted for my reviewers. Create that pull request. It's going to pass all of my different policies, which again, you set it in an organizational setting. Merge it. 
and then I'm good to go. And you sort of just rinse and repeat this process throughout your development. So as you're working on a team in parallel with other people, everyone is forking from the main branch, merging back into the central one, and constantly iterating on those changes. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. Stay tuned for more CICD videos on Data Factory coming in the near future. From here, we're going to talk about the publishing process and then eventually go into actually releasing Pipeline into a separate environment. If you have any questions, feel free to put them in the comments or reach out to us on any of our social media channels.